grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I almost had it. Almost had it. That has to be what's going through cats' minds a lot of the time. I'm not a cat person. I don't really like cats. I also don't really like small dogs, even though I have one. She's awesome. But the the, the fact that th- this cat, right? Cat, one of uh, pound for pound, one of the best predators on the face of the earth. Stealth with those little paws that's able to creep up on any prey. Agility, reflexes like none other, is able to jump many times its body height. And when, when it's hunting for prey, the success rate of a cat, a house cat, is better than almost any other animal in the animal kingdom. However, if you have a laser pointer, right, that, that killer beast that's out there, you can just shine this little light and the cat will chase it for as many hours as you feel like dragging that laser pointer all over the place, you know, in your living room. That's a lot of fun, you know. It's fun to kind of just play with the cat, give it some exercise there. But if you've ever done this, there comes a point when, at least when I do it, where I just kind of feel mean, you know. I feel like, oh, I should let the cat get it. You know, so you, so you do it and you let it there and the cat puts its paw right on top of the laser pointer and all of a sudden the laser jumps to the top. Just doesn't understand it. I had it, right? I almost had it. I should have had this thing. And even though they, they put their paw on it and they realize there's nothing there, there's no reward, there's no food, there's no kill, you can shine that laser pointer back on the couch on the other side of the room, cat will go right for it. I mean, it's not very smart. And I'm not a cat, right? You're not a cat. We're not cats. We, we, we're, we're smarter than them. We might not have the reflexes that a cat do or be able to jump like they do, but we, we realize that if we are going to spend time and energy and effort and, and focus trying to get something, it should have some substance to it. I mean, it's been months since I've chased after a laser pointer in my house. It's just, it, it's not worth my time. It's not worth my effort. It's not worth my energy. And, and this is what the Apostle Paul is, is talking about when he's writing to the people that were living in Ephesus. So you have these people that are living in Ephesus, and, and he just has told them last week in our, in our reading from Ephesus that they should no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves of the world, that, that they should be Uh, uh, strong and and mature and steadfast on where they are going in their lives. And then he continues on by by saying what we read today. So I tell you and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and are separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. And what I want to focus on is that that phrase, futility of their thinking. This is something that the the people of Ephesus would have thought about a lot. The, The Greek poets and playwrights Sophocles and Plato and Socrates and Aristotle, all of them have writings and and spent a lot of time trying to figure out what the whole point of life is. Who's actually wise? Who's actually smart? What should we actually be spending the time in our lives to to get that's not futile? And the word of futility that is there, it's more than just empty. It's more than just, it's a light that you can't grab. It really has this idea of something that's deceptive. Something that seems like it should be great, seems like it's going to have this great payoff, but ends up being nothing. And for the people that are living in Ephesus, just because I always like maps, um, Ephesus is right over here. And Athens would have been right across the Aegean Sea in, in the, the Greek kingdom there. So the trade routes would have gone right across. The ideas that the Athenians had and the Corinthians, same as the people in Ephesus going up in this way. Now, now as I said, with a cat, right? With a cat, you, you can train it. You can say, 
This, this is just a red dot. It's not that important. You don't have to chase it. The cat's still going to chase it. If you do that to a toddler, the toddler, I mean, when they're young, they'll still chase after the red dot. But there comes a point when you shine that laser pointer in their hand, they realize, I can't grab it. There's no point of doing this. And they'll just look at it. They won't spend the time or the effort or the energy to run after those things. Futility of their thinking. What do people in this world run after? What are the things that we try and chase? Because if you don't have someone actually putting it in your hand and, real, and having you realize this doesn't help, this isn't strong enough to, to last. This is food that spoils, as Jesus said in our gospel lesson. What are the things people are chasing? And, you, you know, if you, if you don't have God, if you're darkened by God's understanding, if you can't see him, you're just ignorant of who God is, then you're going to chase after things you, you think are going to help. That only makes sense. So some people chase after money. You know, the, the, the idea that, if I have enough wealth, well, then I'll be comfortable. I won't have to worry about housing payments or credit card bills or uh, where my kids are going to go to school or anything like this. I, I can just, I, I, everything will be okay if I have enough wealth stored up. Or maybe it's power. Maybe that's why some people want to have that wealth so that their vision, their goals, their dreams, they can use their energy to pursue what they want to rather than using the resources with them in them to pursue someone else's goal. So when they say, jump, everyone else says, how high? They think, if I have this, then life is going to be good. I'm not going to be pushed around. My life is going to be great. Other people might, might realize, okay, well, I'm not going to be insanely wealthy in my life, and I'm not, gonna, I'm not really interested in having a powerful position out there. All I really want is happiness. Well, how do you get that? I mean, how, how, how do you become happy and just attain that and hold on to it? And, and the, the temptation is to take a shortcut, right? Get done with work, pick up a six-pack on the way home, and just enjoy your evening. Some people have, you know, stopped by one of the dispensaries on the way home, and have a recreational drug, and just, that's their night. Day after day after day. Because I feel good. I'm happy. I'm better than I was before when I didn't have this. But then you get it. When, when people get that money, they, they finally have it where they're not worried about anything. There's even more problems than when they didn't have the money. They, they start to realize that they always want one more figure in their bank account. There's always one more responsibility. There's always one more effort, and you never are satisfied chasing after that. Or, or maybe they're, they're chasing after the power. But then they realize that when they have all the power, they spend most of their time and energy trying to hold on to it because everyone else is trying to get it from them. So they're not spending their time doing what they want to do. They're, they're just trying to maintain what they have. That slips away too. Or, or you get happiness through a shortcut or, or even by doing things the right way and working hard. But then some days you just wake up and don't feel good. You just accidentally read the news. <laughs> And the whole day is gone after that for how you feel about things in this life. And all of them are this futility of thinking. Chasing after things that don't really exist. Money's real, but it's not really going to make your eternal life better. Power is real, but you're always going to have someone above you. Happiness is real, but you're going to have ups and downs throughout your life. And this is what the Gentiles chased after. But that's not you. 
Right? That's not what you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in Him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life that is chasing after all of these things that are futile to put off your old, old self, which is corrupted by your deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness, something that really lasts, right? You're not corrupted in these ways. You're not looking after just some temporal, earthly pleasure that's out there. We're looking to something that's real, something that lasts, something that is not going to deceive us and waste our time or efforts in this life. And, you know, if God has blessed us with material wealth, wonderful. Use that. Enjoy it. Help people around you. However, at the same time, you and I know that the wealth that we have received from our God is the crown of life. Far more valuable than anything else that we could buy. You can't buy forgiveness of sins. God gives it to you. And the power that we look for is not the power over other people, but the power over ourselves. The power to control those sinful urges within us. The power to defeat death, which is in store for all who live. The power to put away guilt and put away shame because we are with the Lord. And the happiness that you and I receive, we, we understand that happiness is not a gauge for how much God loves us. If you have a happy disposition in this world, that's wonderful. But just because something makes you sad does not mean that God loves you any less. Does not mean that God is not still in control in your life or has some kind of plan for you. He does. True and perfect happiness will only happen for us when we're in heaven. We're not cats. We, we can learn, we can grow, we can use our energy in this life to find our God, to chase after the blessings He wants to give to you, not teasing you with them. He is real, He is not futile, He is the one who you will be able to hold on to once you get to heaven. You'll get to receive today not a red dot, but the Lord's body and blood. Hold it in your hand. Taste and eat the Lord's forgiveness of sins for you. That's real. That's tangible. Just like God's love. Use your time. Use your energy. Use your efforts to follow the Lord where He is leading you. Amen. The peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds through salvation in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you to please rise.